Give me a welcome to Sport at Prime tonight. Let's start with Tennis South Africa, which has told Newsroom Africa that it believes the sport could return safely to action amid the coronavirus outbreak. I recently caught up with the Chief Executive Richard Glover to discuss the impact of COVID-19 and why he believes tennis could return sooner than most. Mr. Richard Glover, the CEO of Tennis South Africa, thank you for your time today, sir. I have no doubt that this has been a very difficult time for you. It has been a difficult time for your affiliates as well. Let's maybe just start off by uh, letting us know how, from your perspective, tennis in South Africa has been so severely affected by COVID-19. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously a worries, worrying time for every single individual within South Africa, not just tennis and tennis players and tennis coaches. But I think t um, tennis, like every aspect of South African society and South African life, has been deeply impacted. I think our impact of or, or the, the impact we felt from COVID-19 started before the lockdown. I don't know if you remember, we had a big ATP Challenger and an ITF women's event in Potchestrum in March, on, in March um, that was cancelled because of COVID-19 on March the 12th, midway through. So we've been dealing with COVID-19 since then, and it's, it's, it's difficult. And I think like everyone, it's really the uncertainty that makes it so difficult from a long-term planning perspective. I imagine that a lot of sporting codes are, are really feeling the pinch and that, that lack of certainty, that uncertainty that you speak about must be so difficult to deal with. And that's, it's forced the governments and probably many other governments around the world to adopt a a blanket approach, something that, if I'm not mistaken, you perhaps have a slightly different perspective of on suggesting that a blanket approach across every sporting code across the country might not be the best way to handle this. There's no rule, rule book for how you handle this. The rule book's being written at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think our government should be complimented for the the probably the risk-free or the conservative approach or the rigid approach that has been taken in this matter. But I, I just worry about the, the long-term damage um, that this crisis and the regulations around this crisis will do to the very fabric of grassroots sports in this country, not just to tennis, but to all sports as well. And I think that that's really is a massive concern. And as you say, I worry about a blanket approach because um, it doesn't really take into account the difference between attending a sports event and actually playing or practicing a sport, but also the differences between contact sports versus non-contact sports, individual sports versus team, team sports as well. You mentioned grassroots, and I know how important that is to you. You and I, in fact, have had so many discussions about the importance of grassroots tennis here in South Africa and, and the important role that it plays in developing the sport. So let's just dive into that slightly more, if you don't mind, because that, of course, is, is the breeding ground for talent. And if that is not taking place, there, there is no you know, Lloyd Harris. There is no Kevin Anderson. There is no you know, Khotsata Munjani coming through because you can't develop those kids right. at a young stage. And I imagine that there's a massive effect on coaches as well because these are, are individuals, men and women from across the country that take time out of their day to try and develop and grow this young talent. And I imagine that they too are, are probably struggling for economic survival as well. Yeah, I think tennis coaches in this, in this country are really, really worried about what, what, the, what this means for them, as you say, from an economic survival perspective. But I think the same principle can be applied to coaches across all sports in this country, particularly what I'd call our, our grassroots coaches. Because the reality is they can't earn a living from coaching their chosen sport, and in this case, tennis. And my, my big fear is what happens if, if they can't return to coaching tennis on a, on even on a limited or restricted basis in the next few weeks or next few months. I think we will lose a lot of those coaches to other things because they'll need to find a way to make a living. And so my concern is what happens in six or eight months or hopefully sooner than that when there's millions of kids who want to play a sport. Will there be coaches in tennis or coaches across other sports who will be able to actually guide them through, through, that, through that sport or introduce them to that sport? I imagine that there's probably a catch-22 here as well, Richard, because I have no doubt that there are probably thousands of parents around the country who are sending their kids to, to private tennis lessons that arguably are not taking place right now, yet they are probably asked to try and help out and make as many payments as possible to try and assist the coaches. And I imagine that they too might well have an argument to say, well, my kid's not really on the court and not practicing. So, I mean, that's a very delicate balance as well that probably needs some attention too. Yeah, look, I think, I think you're right. I think it is a very delicate balance because everyone has been affected by this. So, I mean, the ramifications have, have rippled right through society. Coaches, parents, players, all aspects of tennis, but all aspects of grassroots sports as well. As far as test cases is concerned, I know it's something that you've suggested as well, that you'd like arguably tennis to become a test case to see how it may be able to 
to try and break the mold. How would you recommend to the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture to potentially try and use tennis as a test case in the way forward? Yeah, well, we've written a letter to the, the Honourable Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture. We wrote a letter earlier this week where we basically suggested that if you look at how our government has approached sort of the easing of the lockdown restrictions, it's been done very much on a, a very ma- measured and, and step-by-step basis. And we really feel that approach should be, should be adopted by, by the Department of Sports as well in terms of mm-hmm. at every level identifying two or three sports. And realistically, you have to start with your individual or non-contact sports, like a sport like tennis, and really work with those sports, those two or three sports on a trial basis, on a highly regulated basis, and and, and really write the the rules for regulations and and, and infection controls and and sanitation controls around those sports at every level, and then look to take those lessons and apply them to all other sports in South Africa. We mentioned economic survival a little bit earlier on, and I just wonder if we take it beyond the economic survival of coaches here in South Africa. I remember having a chat to uh, Clint Seller, a motorbike champion in SA, and we spoke about the financial impact on, on motorcycling here in SA, which doesn't have an enormous budget to play with. And I imagine that unless you get to the top level, that tennis is probably in a somewhat similar boat. Can tennis economically survive months and months and months of a COVID-19 lockdown? Would they be able to make it through? Would there still be domestic tennis here in SA if this were to continue for many months to come, you feel? From a federation perspective, Tennis South Africa is lucky in that we have some really good sponsors who are standing by us. Um, So that means financially we can survive um, over a set period of months. Obviously, if we're still talking, uh, if we're still in the same situation in 12 months' time, it's a very different answer that I would give to that question. Um, So I I think we're okay, but we're also having to cut our cloth accordingly. I mean, we've we're cutting costs across the board from a federation and organization perspective. And both myself and all of our staff have agreed to take pay cuts um, for the immediate future, just so that we can ensure that, that this organization can survive in, in the medium to long term. There's been a lot of discussion in various sporting codes abroad of, of the non-playing staff, essentially those that work incredibly hard on the ground to keep the sport turning over. It could be anyone from, you know, team drivers to kit men and women, you know, the non-playing staff are, are so often underrated, the services that they provide. And there's been a discussion around the world of how some of the top players may be able to assist by making some donations or taking severe pay cuts. Is, is that an option for tennis in South Africa? Is that a discussion that can be had with some of the top players? Are they able to do something along those lines to assist the, the non-playing staff for tennis? Is it? Yeah, so, so the, the, the cost-cutting measures we put in place extends to our professional players as well. So we provide some of our professional players with a monthly stipend or monthly support payments, and that's also been reduced as part of this cost-cutting. So that's, that's already come into effect. So those, those measures are definitely happening. I mean, we're also looking in terms of we're in the very early stages in terms of looking at the legal aspects of maybe setting up some sort of um, support fund, an independent support fund for – for key sectors in the sort of the wider South African tennis ecosystem. So it's so to raise some funds and provide some support for them. So coaches, obviously, but also like our technical officials and other aspects of the ecosystem as well. So now we are actively pursuing as many channels as possible to see what can be done to raise more funds and, and get some of that money into the ecosystem. I think one thing to say about the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture is they, they, they they understand that there's a real financial crunch within our sports and within our federations. And I know they are actively pursuing as many internal national government channels as possible to really see if they can find some funding, some relief funding for sports federations in the country. So I think there's a lot of work streams in operation at the moment to try and assist both internally, but also externally as well. I know you mentioned relief fund now that the Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture had released that 150 million rand relief fund for um, athletes and, and you know actors and those in the arts as well. Are you aware if any bids had come from the tennis side? Have you guys tried to get in on, on some of that 150 million rand relief fund to try and relieve some pressure? Yeah, so that, that relief fund is obviously very, very specific, as you say, and, and from an athlete and a sports perspective, it's very much aimed at what I'd call professional or semi-professional athletes. So we are, we've worked with some of our athletes within our organization to apply for funding. Um, we're still awaiting official confirmation, but based on the sort of the, the communication to and fro, we're pretty optimistic so that some of the athletes who, who we've, we've applied for on their behalf will receive some funding. Well, Richard, thank you very much for your time today. We do appreciate it as always. All the best for what I imagine will probably be a very difficult couple of weeks, if not months, coming up for tennis in South Africa. Please keep up the great work, and we really do hope that 
um, tennis in South Africa will be able to get over this heap and we'll continue to see a handful of young, talented kids getting back on court to see the revival of tennis in SA. Thanks, Mark. And I just wanted to end on a positive note and say we're really looking forward to the, the light at the end of this tunnel and particularly when those millions and millions of kids who are currently locked down who are ready to play sport want to get back to sports. I think it's a huge opportunity not just for tennis but for all sports in South Africa.